Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a locus problem. A really nice problem, and we've done a similar problem before, but I also wanted to share this with you. I think these problems are fun to solve. I hope you are enjoying them as well. Please let me know what you think. So we have a polar equation, right? R equals cosine theta plus I. Wait a minute. There's no I in the equation. I got carried away. Sorry about that. I thought this was going to be something like Euler's formula E to the I theta cosine theta plus I sine theta. So we're missing the I here, right? If we did have the I, this would be E to the power I theta, which would be, I guess, an interesting equation, but we don't have that. Okay, anyways, this is still fun. Now, how do we deal with these kinds of equations? Well, in the polar system, you gotta know a couple things, so that'll help you uh, so identify the solution path. So uh, in the argon plane, if you plot a complex number like x plus yi, and suppose it's in the first quadrant for simplicity's sake, this will be x and this will be the y coordinate, but this point it represents x plus yi. And obviously we have something called an argument, which is the angle in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise, and the distance from zero to the number x plus yi is called the modulus or r, or the absolute value of our complex number, and the absolute value basically of x plus yi, which is r, is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, if you use the Pythagorean theorem, of course, this is a right angle. You notice that in the first quadrant, especially, we can use lengths, right? We can safely say that, okay, cosine theta is x over r, and sine theta is y over r, right? From the right triangle. This is the triangle I'm talking about. So from here, we can actually isolate the x and y values and write them as x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. One more thing that'll probably help you sometimes is the y over x is tangent theta because r cancels out and you end up with theta or tangent theta, okay? Cool, cool. Now, this is pretty much the summary of the polar conversion. In other words, we're gonna convert this from polar to Cartesian. And Cartesian, the word Cartesian is interesting. It comes from Descartes, because if you think about the spelling, how Descartes is spelled, you're gonna realize it's from Descartes. <laughs> One day he was looking at the ceiling, supposedly, and he, all of a sudden he realized, uh-oh, we can actually identify points on a coordinate plane system and then that's just called the Cartesian uh, coordinate system, which is expressed with X and Y, of course. So that's the relationship between polar and Cartesian. Let's go ahead and convert our expression. How do we convert it though, right? We have R equals something, which is interesting, right? So if you look at this very carefully, you're probably gonna be like, what is going on here? Because I know R is square root of this, but I don't have an expression for cosine theta. Yes, you do, but there's a better way to do it. Obviously, you can write cosine theta in terms of x over r, but then you kind of need to do something about it. What is r again, right? So that's a lot of work. I think this is gonna, this, this approach that I'm about to show you is better. So notice that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So I've, I don't know if I forgot to tell you or I did it on purpose, but if you think about squaring both sides, you're gonna get r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And this is just beautiful because this basically gives you a relationship between uh, x squared, y squared, and r squared. That's exactly what we need. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by r, and you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Look at that. We're getting r squared, r cosine theta, r sine theta, which is everything we have. R squared from here becomes R cosine theta. Now, one of the questions that might come up is like, are we allowed to multiply? Can't R be zero? Yes, but R equals zero is not an interesting case. It's just a point, right? So we're gonna try to avoid it at all costs. So this is beautiful because R squared is X squared plus Y squared, yay. R cosine theta, have you memorized it? You should, is R cosine theta is R cosine, sorry, I repeated myself. R cosine theta is X and R sine theta is Y. So why not replace those? So this is X and this is Y. 
So now we get x squared plus y squared equals x plus y. So this might look like a weird equation, like can you really find two real numbers? Whose sum of squares equals their sum? Yes, obviously. And there are actually infinitely many solutions to this, which you're going to see in a little bit. I'm going to actually show you all the solutions. Can you imagine? I can't list them, but I can blank them. I'll fill in the blanks, okay? <laughs> you probably already know. So we're going to first go ahead and work with this equation algebraically. So for that purpose, what do you want to do? I want to put everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and subtract x plus y and then kind of bring the x's together and the y's together. And we're thinking, we have x squared and y squared. So this is like a quadratic equation with two variables. So if you think about the quadratic equations, they are usually conics, right? You know about conic sections, parabola, hyperbola. You know, we have a general equation ax squared plus by squared plus cxy plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero. And you can find a discriminant. Depending on the discriminant, you can find different things like it could be an ellipse. Oops, did I say that? Anyways, let's continue. So one of the things I can do is complete the square because these squares can be completed. How? Think about the coefficient of x. It's negative 1. Forget the negative, just say 1, okay? Because it doesn't matter. Plus minus sign it really doesn't matter here uh, for completing the square at least for that step. So what is half of 1? One? 1 half. What is 1 half squared? 1 fourth. Exactly. That's your magical, mathematical number. That's the number you need to add to x squared minus x to make it a perfect square. And that's just perfect. And of course, the same thing goes for y squared minus y because it's the same thing, just a different variable. No big deal. And then 0, we added the 1 fourth twice. That is 2 times 1 fourth, which is 1 half. Great. Now, we got perfect squares, didn't we? So go ahead and take this and take that separately. The first one is going to become x minus 1 half squared. Second one is y minus 1 half squared equals 1 half. What is this? Well, if you are familiar with a little bit of analytical geometry, which is fun, h, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared is the equation of a circle, okay? equation you should know this equation of a circle but what about hk and r what are they well hk is the center and r is the radius make sense another formula you gotta memorize not too hard if you practice it hopefully it'll settle and stay with you so in our equation what do we have h equals one half and k equals one half so we have a circle whose center is at one comma one half comma one half with a radius of the square root of 1. Now be careful because this is r squared. So r is going to be 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. And be careful, r cannot be negative. Uh-oh, we're not going to do negative radii. Let's continue. Remember, I told you that I was going to show you all the solutions, right? Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, great. So here's all the solutions. Ta-da! Yes, all the solutions are on a circle. In other words, the polar equation r equals cosine theta plus sine theta is the equation of a circle. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to watch CyberMath. Bye-bye.